In this video, we check out my Apple IIc computer flat panel display and with the help of Javier Riviera, replace the worn out monochrome liquid crystal display with a new color composite monitor. Sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. Here we can see my boxed Apple IIc flat panel display, which was introduced by Apple Computer on April 24, 1984 and retailed at $595 US and features a 7-inch monochrome display with 80 columns by 24 rows and support for double high-res graphics. It connects to the DB15 port on the back of the Apple IIc and it'll also work with the IIc Plus using the same port. The Apple IIc flat panel display was discontinued September 1st, 1990. According to Wikipedia, an estimated 10,000 displays were produced, so this is a pretty rare accessory since not too many were sold during the six years it was being produced by Apple. So there you go, a little history on the flat panel display. Here is the Apple IIc flat panel display up close and personal. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the back. So let's go ahead and turn this around here. See if that is in the shot. That is in the shot. Right here are the uh, little screws that screw into the back of the Apple IIc to hold it. And as you can see, it's got a little stand right here that'll tilt it up when it is on the Apple IIc computer, which I'm going to go ahead and get that set up right now. Look at that. The flat panel is installed on my Apple IIc. And that shot right there looks like something you would have seen in an Apple advertisement. No cords visible, just looking sharp and nice, but the power is hooked up. Let's go ahead and turn on the machine and you will see it power up and you will hear the iconic floppy drive looking for a disc, which I do not have a disc installed right now, but let's turn it on. Apple IIc. Check disk drive, and that's because no disk, but I'm gonna go ahead and put in this disk, ProDOS user's disk to uh, boot the machine really quick. I'll put that in the drive. Control open Apple reset. Oh, take two. Check that out. Nice wide screen. It's not a 4-3 aspect ratio, but the original flat panel, it wasn't set up to be a 4-3 aspect ratio. But there you go. There it is running with black and white. Next, I'm going to load a game in color so you can see what that looks like. I've gone ahead and removed the ProDOS disc. I'm going to put in Karatika for the Apple II. This is an original disc. So we'll go ahead and put that in the drive. We're going to do Control Open Apple Reset and let's see if we can get it on the first try. Fail! So you can hear it loading. Border button software. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that. Tilt up. Check that out. Full color on a flat panel display. And of course, you know, it's going to bring up the uh, telling you about the game. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch through all of that, so I'm going to go ahead and press the space bar. Look at how awesome that is in color. I'm not going to play the game. I'm just letting it run so you can see the amazing color. Look at that. That is so great. Go ahead and back out. Look at that. So awesome. Next, I'm going to show you what you need if you want to do this mod yourself. And I'm also going to tell you about Javier Riviera, 
that has done this mod to many, many screens over the years. So hang on, let's get ready for that. While I talk about Javier and how this mod is done, I have Pac-Man running on the 2C with the flat panel in blazing awesome color. Javier uh, is a really amazing dude. Um, he is famous for doing retro writing. He's got a channel, Adventures in Retro Writing and Retro Computing. I will put a link to his channel down in the description. But also down in my description will be a link to a video that he did recently that he did this mod for a guy in Europe that sent him the monitor, uh, you know, the flat panel, and he went ahead and did the mod for him. So he does a full-on teardown and shows you how he did the mod. In my video, I'm not going to be doing that, but I will show you, like I said, what you need to look for if you want to do the mod yourself. You can also reach out to Javier, and he would be happy to help you as well. But how I found out about this mod was back in 2015, reading a blog post by Javier on the Call Apple website. And there'll be a link to that article also down in the description. So check that out as well. But long story short, he spent many, many years looking to find a replacement screen to put in failing flat panel screens. And I should mention that as well, that my original flat panel was not working. Well, technically it was working, but I mean, it was so faint you could barely see it. And that was a known issue back when they came out as well as 30 plus years later. So if you have one of these monitors and it's working perfect, I do not recommend that you do that. Enjoy it, you know, stock. But if the thing isn't working, or if you want to you know, live on the edge and make it color, go for it. So yeah, anyways, let me grab the screen. Here is the monitor that you will need to find if you want to do this mod yourself. It is a rear view mirror LCD monitor, TFT color. It is a 10.2 inch in size. And this picture here, this is actually what it looks like. And then here's the other side of the box as well. Sadly, I do not have a part number for this, but you can find them on eBay, Amazon, AliExpress. They come from China. This one did come with a manual, so I will show you that. I do not read Chinese, but maybe you do or have a friend that could potentially translate this and get a part number. So I'll just show you this manual here. Go ahead and open it up. Here is the inside of the manual. Again, I have no clue what any of this says, except for the obvious, you know, where there's pictures. Pictures are kind of universal. And the monitor does come with a little remote control, which is cool, so you can get into the brightness and color and tint and all that. Mine is set up really nice and perfect, so there's no need to do that. And while we're at it, you know what's coming. I want to give a shout out to my patrons. Link in the description to my Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash geek with social skills. If you'd like to support me and my work there. Next and finally, I'm going to show you the original parts that came out of my flat panel in case you uh, want to know what those look like. Here is the original control board that would plug into the 2C or the 2C Plus with the DB15 right there. This is not modified. This is still original and could be used if needed. A ribbon cable goes from here in this port. Get that right there into the control board on the back of the monitor. Let me grab that. Here is the original monitor. This is the back of it. And uh, I was telling you about the ribbon cable that would plug in right there. And that ribbon cable is actually used in this modification. And something that I just noticed now, if you look at the back of this control board right here, let's get this held up here, right here for Toshiba LCD only. This is a Mitsumi monitor. So apparently Apple was using Toshiba LCDs or maybe they planned on it. So 
I'd be curious if you've got one of these LCDs and you open it up, is it a Mitsumi or is it a Toshiba? There's a little switch right here. It's kind of interesting. And then uh, here is the actual monitor here, I'm getting all kinds of glare and you can see stuff, reflections in the room. But yeah, so there it is. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out my links in the description to Javier's video on how to do this mod, his blog post on Call Apple, the link to my Patreon. Again, thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next video.